Hey there, I'm Chris Panetti, host of the Smart Author Podcast. In this episode, I speak with Aaron Van Dyke of Van Dyke Marketing Co. And we spoke about the secrets the big five publishers use to sell out books. I think learning and understanding more about launching your book is really important because it can help you understand and achieve your sales goals. If you're currently pre-launch or have launched with no sales, then this episode will be perfect for you as it will give you the steps and tools you need to have a successful book launch or revive your dead book. Some of the main topics we'll be covering today include what it's like working on big launches, how Erin got some of her best marketing strategies from world-class authors, and how you can create an ongoing promotion engine for your book. At the end of this episode, make sure you visit our website where you can find all the show notes plus the links mentioned. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe so you're always the first to know when a new episode is released. Now, let's head over to this fantastic interview. Welcome to another episode of the Smart Author Podcast. Uh, today, I'm joined by Erin Van Dyke. Erin, how are you? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Me too. Erin is kind of a wizard when it comes to book launching and marketing and, and all of those kind of things. So Erin, I would love if you could take 30 to 60 seconds and give everyone a bit of a background to your experience in the space. So I got started in publishing actually as an intern and it was just kind of the first first gig out of out of university and but just always loved reading always had a passion for books and so it was kind of one of those dream internship moments and um, lucky for me internship turned into full time position uh, in a marketing department at a at a large publisher um, so just got some really awesome experience got to work with I mean just some very like high level authors. Um, kind of some of the some of the best in, in the business. So I was very fortunate to uh, get uh, get some great experience there. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, uh, moved overseas and then just branched out on my own. Kind of started my own book marketing company and have had the chance to work with you know multiple different publishers now as well as independent authors, uh, helping them get their kind of books into the hands of readers. So. I mean, I've, I've been fortunate to get some experiences with some, you know, large big five publishers uh, and as, you know, all, as well as just some, some independent authors and just really kind of get the full scope of the publishing experience. Right. So what's it like working with those bigger publishers? Are things pretty crazy, like all of the time? <laughs> Yeah, it, well, it's funny because I mean, different publishers will kind of offer different things, and so that's kind of been you know interesting to, to get to know kind of how different teams work and seeing okay, here's you know here's what might work for you know for one company, but you know might not work for another. Um, but I mean, with some of those just like high kind of high profile books, there's so many pieces that go into those campaigns. Uh, I mean, just it's just very kind of high level, a lot of touch points. Um, so it, it, it can get, you know, really crazy with some of those projects because there's a, a million balls rolling because, you know, it might be an author with, you know, they run their own organization or company. So, you know, it's finding ways to utilize like really like every nook and cranny of, you know, of what you have, um, mm -hmm. to really like exhaust the, you know, the message of the book. So, yeah, those, those campaigns can get, uh, can just get, you know, a little bit wild, but that's why it's kind of good to have like the project management and kind of know where everything is at every point in time. Um, but they're really fun. And um, I mean, honestly, some of the most fun campaigns that I get to work on. Yeah, right. So when you work with, obviously, you've got to integrate with the author and their business, plus the, uh, the publisher's business as well. Do you guys generally have like different um, tools or suites of tools that you use to make that collaboration easier? I mean, I know one that I like to use, I'll use Asana. I know, you know, there's publishers using, you know, Asana Basecamp, um, you know, just even like Google Drive, like the Google suite, just to kind of keep everything organized. Um, and then, you know, there's also just kind of the old fashioned, like, oh, here's, here's a spreadsheet, you know, get everyone's kind of like tasks and duties in there and keep track of it um, that way. But uh, I mean, it, it's always easier to kind of have that like automated and kind of getting everyone like a digital key to, you know, to the, to the project plan and getting every, like all those pieces taken care of. Um, but yeah, it's, it, some people are like advanced and some people like to just like stick with like an Excel spreadsheet. So it's really kind of teach their own. 
I'm sure there's some like older authors who are just like freaked out by Asana and things like that, that they don't know. Um, especially when, you know, spreadsheets work perfectly fine for project management sometimes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So on the flip side of that, like pretty full on, but fun working with publishers. What's it like working with big authors? You know, you've got a few really awesome um, names under your repertoire, like uh, Don Miller yeah. and, and, and such. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, in those, in those cases, it's really, I mean, what the biggest takeaway for me is just like the learning experience, you know, cause they've, you know, on a lot of these projects, you know, I've, I've come in years into their, you know, writing career. And so they've put in, you know, all of the, like the hard work and, you know, writing, you know, multiple books, even before I've, you know, gotten to a project. So for me, and one of like the coolest things is just to learn from their experience and what, what they've done, um, what they've done on past books, you know, that have worked really well that we can integrate into a new campaign, uh, you know, learning things that they might have tried the last time around that just, you know, aren't worth, you know, the effort of doing again. Um, but then also a lot of, you know, a lot of those authors, they have been building up their own brand and their own businesses, their own, you know, organizations. And so, you know, even getting like a peek into how they, you know, they're building, you know, their own ecosystem. It's just, you know, it's so cool to, you know, be privy to that you know, information and, and learning process and then getting to kind of take pieces of, you know, of what they're doing and apply it to not only, you know, their book launch, but seeing where it applies um, on other projects as well. So, mm. I mean, it, it's been, I've been really, you know, fortunate to, to work with some of, you know, authors like that and being able to step into those campaigns and, you know, and really just trying to figure out what's going to work for their audiences. You know, what do, what do their people want from them? You know, what can they, you know, create, you know, in terms of this book launch experience, that's really going to get people excited about the new book. So, I mean, for me, it's, you know, it's really, you know, about learning from, you know, from what they've done and, you know, just getting to, just getting to kind of sit at the table is one of the best ways to learn how to be better. Mm. And so, um, with that, like how, when you go through these big launches with these guys, what determines success on a launch? Do you usually predetermine what the goals are for a launch before you go through a launch with them? You know, how do you meet expectations with those things? Yeah. So with a lot of, uh, with a lot of those big projects, I mean, there's, you know, almost always the publisher involved. They've got their kind of sales goals that they're shooting for. So it's really kind of a collaborative effort of looking at, okay, what, what do, does the publisher realistically, you know, want to hit in these first few months in terms of sales? Um, you know, the author sometimes will have, you know, sometimes it's a similar goal. Sometimes their, you know, goal might be more aggressive. And so just kind of trying to find that happy medium of like, okay, here's, you know, here's what, what's realistic, but also, you know, looking at the kind of looking at the data and making sure that, you know, we're not necessarily setting something that's too crazy or too unattainable. And, you know, cause I mean, I think it's easier to be confident, you know, moving forward when, you know, you're actually going to be hitting a realistic goal. And then mm -hmm. once you get there, then you can set the next one. And I think it's easier to just like tackle that with confidence. So I'll try and, and navigate that with, you know, with authors who, I mean, they might say, you know, I want to sell, you know, 10,000 books. And, you know, if, if you don't have, you know, a, you know, a large platform or, you know, like a network that's going to, you know, kind of like expand beyond your own, uh, it can be a really difficult, you know, benchmark to get to. So, you know, being able to kind of realistically say, hey, you know, we, we see about one to 2% of an author's audience is going to actually pre-order a book. You know, so let's, you know, let's take this goal and move it more in this direction. Let's shoot for this first. And then when we hit it, you know, we can set the next one. So it's really, you know, talking about the, the data and like knowing what's like kind of what the trend is, um, you know, blending that with, you know, publisher goals and expectations as well as the authors. Yeah, right. So if an author had little to no audience, how would you, is that just not a good fit to work with or how would you navigate that conversation? Yeah. So, I mean, I think for an author who might just be starting out and they might have, you know, maybe a couple hundred followers um, or, you know, readers in their network. I mean, there's definitely, 
when I when when I work with an author who's in that situation, I kind of put the focus more on the platform building and just really, you know, making sure that their that their message is is airtight, that they're with what they're writing about, that's kind of exactly what they're, you know, speaking about online. And as they're growing an email list or, you know, trying to gain more, you know, social media followers. And I'll also just really encourage them to make sure that with those, with that community that you do have, like, make sure you're really connecting with them on, you know, the message that you're writing about. Mm. Um, because, I mean, those are still going to be, those are still going to be book buyers and, you know, whether or not they buy in the pre-order phase or whether or not they buy, you know, five months after you've released the book. I mean, it's all about kind of that relationship building piece. And so it's not that I, you know, wouldn't, work with us with an author who's got a smaller following I, I think it's just it's got to be someone who's willing to put in the time and the effort to keep growing and also putting in kind of the the consistent work of reaching the network that they do have and doing mm -hmm. it you know with with clarity so I think it's it really it really kind of comes down to the author sometimes because there's also people with huge platforms who they're not really connecting with the audience they're not clarifying you know the message of their book and they're not mm -hmm. being you know not being clear about what the book is actually going to offer, you know, their people and, you know, they actually, you know, don't see the sales that they, that they want to see, even if they've got, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers. So yeah. it's, um, it's hard for that to be like, you know, the, the yes, no, like the black and white, because if an author's, you know, willing to roll up their sleeves and, and put in the work, then if they've got 200 followers, they can still get, you know, a, a great, you know, they can still find success in their book launch. It's just then again, navigating that expectation of, sure. you know, here, this is going to be the goal that we shoot for. This is what's going to be realistic. And let's be super pumped about that and then keep going from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. So what are the, what are some of the best uh, strategies and things that you've picked up over the years from the bigger launches that you've done or working with the bigger authors who have their own way of doing things? What have you found that works when, you know, when you're launching a book, um, do you have a specific process you follow? Yeah. And so, I mean, one of, I think one of the, like the first things, uh, I mean, I kind of, like, I kind of been breaking this down a little bit, trying to figure out, okay, if I was going to tell, you know, authors like three things that are, you know, super crucial, it's, um, it's really, um, it's, it's getting clarity on what your, you know, of who your audience is, what you're writing about and how you can actually like give that message to them in a meaningful way. Um, and actually, you know, implementation, you know, rolling up, rolling up your sleeves, putting in the time, putting in the work. Um, and then also kind of having the, having the, like the confidence to just really, you know, own the message that you're, that you're writing and getting it out in front of people. So those are kind of the three things like over, I mean, I guess I've been in publishing for, you know, about eight, nine years. And so that's kind of, you know, over that time, the three kind of main things, like, of course, like each of them are going to have their own kind of buckets branching off of them, but kind of really at like the top of the tree, it's like having clarity, implementing and having confidence. And when you're kind of putting all of those three things together, you know, with all the pieces that fall underneath uh, is when you really start to see, you know, some synergy and, you know, when you can kind of have that successful launch. Um, so, I mean, these, when you've got, when you've got, you know, followers or, you know, email subscribers, I mean, you want to make sure that when you're talking about your book that, you know, or even if you're like about to write a book, you want it to be something that the people who, you know, are following you want to hear. It's, I mean, if they're, mm. you know, struggling with something in particular, if they're coming to you for, you know, certain advice or expertise, you want to make sure that you're actually, you know, writing about, you know, the things that are going to, you know, help them through that process. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of more like nonfiction specifically, but it, I mean, it's kind of surprising sometimes how, you know, if you're writing maybe too broad or too generally, you just com can completely miss the mark and not see, you know, the sales that you want to see. Sometimes it's like, really like getting, you know, super niche and writing, you know, ex about something super specific and a topic that, you know, might be like, oh, well, only a few people might actually want to read about, you know, 
a book about, you know, X, Y, Z, but if you write way too broad, then people, you know, it's like, ah, like that's not really for me. So it's kind of surprising, like when you can really like get that clarity, how many doors that ends up opening for you in terms of, in terms of book sales. Um, yeah. And then, I mean, just to, just to harp on that as well. So yeah. I was actually doing a book audit, a book sales audit the uh, last week and the, uh, the person who I was speaking with, he, he had a cookbook essentially. And it was like, mm-hmm. it was a generic cookbook. <laughs> um, and he yeah. sold, he's like, why have I only sold 20 copies? And he's gone yeah. through this process of using a, um, a publisher and distributor and he just hasn't seen any sales. And I'm just like, dude, like you, you don't have an, you're not speaking to anyone. It's like, yeah. no one's going to buy the anything cookbook, you know? Right. And he's like, I, I want to specialize in gluten-free anyway. And so like, we're going through the process of like, okay, let's specialize in gluten-free. Then we can optimize yeah. like what your book title is, all of your descriptions, your keywords, your covers. And, and then we've got an audience now that you can actually rank for, that you can categorize for, and you're, you're actually speaking to people. Um, and exactly. so um, it's, it's so true. Like we wouldn't create new offers in business for like anybody, you know, it has to be this offer mm-hmm. is for this specific person because I know that they're going through that specific pain point right now. And I have the solution. Yeah. It's not like, you know, I have an offer because of anything. Like you just can't, you can't succeed in that way. And it, it's interesting right. that people will look at books and, and, um, and audiences and, and things like that without considering the fact that they're, book is a solution to a specific problem or pain that someone's going through, you know, more specifically in the nonfiction space, like you said, but even with, uh, your fiction books, I feel like that, you know, that's, that's a solution for someone in a certain way as well. Yeah, definitely. Cause I mean, on, on the fiction side too, I mean, you've got, I mean, there's so many different genres and I mean, Mm -hmm. like my parents, like I know exactly what books to buy them for Christmas because they read in the same genre, like over and over and over again. So, mm. you know, I'm, I'm not gonna like, not gonna, you know, buy them a book. I know they're not gonna, they're not gonna read. And it's, it's clear because, you know, even like even fiction, it's like, if you're, if you want like a mystery thriller, you, that's what you're going to buy. Mm-hmm. And if, you know, if you're, if you're a mystery thriller author and you, you know, decide, oh, you know, maybe I'll, you know, try something else then you just have to be prepared then to not see the same sales that you were getting sure. from, you know, some of your past books, because it's, you just kind of have to realize like it's a different audience. Um, you would have to go through the process of like building up a different audience and then you'd exactly. pretty much be serving two different people, you know, at right. that point. But there's actually, I mean, there's actually like fiction authors that do that and they'll actually mm. build up kind of two separate, um, you know, silos and they might even write under a pseudonym for, you know, for a different genre because they want to express themselves, you know, in a different creative way. Um, but, you know, they also realize that that kind of has to be its own, its own brand and kind of like maybe its own, you know fake author for, you know, on that side, um, because you kind of do have to differentiate it so you can stay, you know, in a very specific lane. When it comes to like post-launch, what, it, like, what are some of your biggest uh, tips for ongoing marketing for book promotion? I mean, I would say, I mean, one is just keep just talking about the book. I mean, I've, I've worked with many, many authors before who, you know, we, we've got a good pre-order campaign. You know, we've been pushing for, you know, a few months and then launch day gets there. And then it's just like silence after that. And it's okay, like, I'm done. <laughs> you, do realize, you do realize your book is out forever. You know, it's <laughs> this, we're not stopping here. Like this is actually the starting line. Like everything that we've done up to here was just like the pre-work. Um, so, I mean, really kind of that first step is just like con- continue just talking about the book and finding ways to fit it into, you know, like your regular content cycle. I mean, that's kind of like the first thing and you'll find, like, just find ways, like pull out, you know, you go through the chapters, pull out some like subtopics and you could just send out, you know, an email or write, you know, a social media caption that just kind of focuses on that, you know, one topic, you know, maybe it's a story that you shared in chapter four, you know, halfway through and, you know, you can pull that out and, you know, use that in other places online and, you know, be able to tie it back into kind of into the overall book. So, I mean, I think that that's, that's kind of one, I mean, two is, I mean, in terms of kind of like the, 
your network, your community. I mean, kind of like the buzzword, like influencer, but I mean, just really, you know, going and making those kind of connections with people that, you know, that, you know, it might even be kind of like cold calls, cold emails to people who, you know, you want to know, or you think could be a good fit for, you know, sharing about your book and just, you know, starting a, you know, relationship there. Um, but really, you know, not, not being afraid to ask for help, you know, reach out to, you know, people who can help you and can share, you know, the word about your book and kind of be that, you know, almost like that endorser for, um, you know, for this, you know, this piece that you've written, um, because that's word of mouth is, you know, the number one bookseller. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's one of the hardest things to kind of quantify or just kind of create out of nowhere. Um, so, really kind of one of the next best things is going out to your, you know, to your people and saying, Hey, I would love your help sharing about this. You know, here's, here's a free, you know, download you, you can share with your, you know, with your audience, you know, no, you know, no strings attached, like give them either a free chapter or, you know, I'm going to host a free webinar, you know, if you want to share it with your, you know, with your email list or with your social media, um, you know, followers. So, um, so yeah, so it's, you know, continuing to talk about it. Um, you know, network with your kind of with your community. Um, and then I would say too, just, you know, find like, uh, just kind of dig into, you know, your target audience, you know, kind of look at what their maybe like needs or desires are. And just like, sometimes it's just like good old fashioned brainstorming and just thinking like, what's like the craziest, you know, idea that I can, you know, that I can come up with, or, you know, what's like, what's an out of the box thing that I could at least, you know, try to do, you know, five months after the book comes out. And, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, trying out different things that just seem like they're kind of weird or they might not work because mm -hmm. they might work. So um, I would say, you know, that's a really big thing because we had, uh, this is, you know, back when I was at um, a publisher several years ago, we had a book that had been out for probably about six months and Valentine's day was, was coming up. And so we were just trying to think of a, just like a fun way to promote, you know, a book that's, it's been out, it had been doing well, but, you know, we wanted to keep, you know, we wanted to keep the engine going. So um, we came up with this, you know, with this campaign, we called it share the love. Um, so, cause the book was called for the love. And so mm -hmm what what we said was you know there's a lot of people you know in this audience to you know they might not be able to you know buy the book for themselves you know at this point so you know we we really kind of took a chance on the author's you know audience being you know being just a group of very generous and kind people and we said hey if you have been wanting this book and you just you can't you're not in a place to get it for yourself you know enter this you know enter your information in this form um, you know, so it's essentially just saying like, raise your hand if you, you know, want a free copy of the book. And then, you know, we, we kind of had a few days where that was open and then, you know, we, we kind of closed that form and then opened up a second form and sent it out to her people and said, Hey, all of these people, you know, have raised their hand. They're not able to, you know, get the book for themselves right now. Like, but we think that you guys are going to do it. And they did like, and then some, so it was just like, it was just one of those things where it was like. I mean, we can try it. Like, who knows if it's going to work? And, you know, if not, you know, we were going to have to, you know, you know, eat the kind of eat the costs of getting books to, you know, all of the people who had raised their hands. But it's just like things like that. It's just like thinking, you know, just thinking like of what, like looking at the audience, you know, what do they, you know, what do they need? Like, what are some of their characteristics? And like, how can we think of something like fun to keep like, keep the engine going yeah. and just kind of like keep the, keep the promotion alive and, you know, keep people talking about the book. And I mean, that campaign even got, you know, picked up by a couple of news outlets. So it was yeah, just even yeah. just good, like stained, ended up yeah. being good publicity for the book too. Um, but yeah, it was just like, it's just like crazy, just crazy stuff that, you know, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. Oh, I love that. Re creating relationships with peers and, you know, people who have, similar audiences to you who you know your book would be a good fit for that's so like undervalued that's probably one of the yeah. best things you can do in business in general for like forever um and it's yeah. something that i think most pe most people often overlook or discount um in some way it, it you know it's not it's not always an in instantaneous um return 
um, on time and effort. Um, but it's it's going to create long lasting relationships, and it'll it'll eventually do some really fantastic good for you and your business. And I think it's just like the concept of of asking for help. It just really freaks people out sometimes of, you know, being like, oh, you know, I don't want to yeah. burden anyone with sharing about my book. But I mean, it's the it's the authors who are, you know, out there making multiple asks that, you know, that those are the books you're seeing, like trending on Amazon. It's, you yeah. know, people who they're it's almost like that, you know, unashamed asking people to, you know, post on social media, you know, mm-hmm. send out emails. And I mean, even now I'm working with a, a couple authors who, I mean, they're they're posting on their story and they're kind of, they're tagging, you know, their, their friends, like people in their network, you know, in the story so that they can just easily reshare it, you know? So sometimes it's even just like a super simple thing. And, you know, it's, it's, it's like some of like the minimum, like, you know, lowest bar, you know, lowest like energy for someone to, you know, to actually, you know, do something and promote it. Um, so sometimes, yeah, it's just thinking like, what, how can I make this like literally the easiest for someone to share about my book and then just kind of following through and giving them that opportunity. So, um, but yeah, it's really like being able to, you know, kind of go through your contact list and say, Hey, just wanted to like, let you know, I'm, you know, I'm releasing a book, like would really love, love your help. Um, here's some copy and paste text, you know, that you can put into social media that you could, you know, put into an email, um and you know thanks you know thanks a lot for your support and sometimes it's like really you know that easy and that person might share you know you might get you know you might get some book sales off of it you might get some new followers off of it but then again you know the more even even if that's the case even if some of these you know asks are not necessarily leading to book sales right away they might in four months, they might in a year, like it's, it's just even getting people into your ecosystem, like whether that's on an email list or, you know, following you on social media, then the more you're continuing to talk about the book, the more you're continuing to keep, you know, keep that message consistent in what you're putting out there, then, you know, a year from now, someone might say like, oh, actually they did write a book about the same topic. And I've seen them talking about, I've been talking about leadership for so long. I think they really know their stuff. I'm actually going to, you know, pick up the book now. So it's just, uh, you, you never know how long that, you know, the tale is going to be on someone, you know, finding out about you to actually following through and buying the book. Um, that's why it's just, you know, keeping that relationship, keeping that messaging consistent. Yeah. And what my mentor, um, he, he calls it doing the reps. Like you wouldn't, you wouldn't go to the gym mm-hmm. and expect to be, buff you know after one session you gotta like you gotta put in the effort every single day you know create relationships every single day follow up with relationships and continue building those um you know continue to network continue to build your audience continue to nurture your audience because so many people get a lead and then they just like they just don't communicate with them and it's like okay well you know now you've not nurtured that nurtured that uh that person um, and so they're probably going to forget who you are if, if they haven't really gotten a good insight to who you are in the first place. Um, and so yeah. if you can continue to do those things, continue to build content, publish, et cetera, then um, you're going to be in a fantastic place. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, is there any where you want to send people who are listening? Yeah, sure. So um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, um, it's at the book marketer. Uh, so I like to post, I'll post kind of advice, best practices, um, you know, on, on that page. So that would be kind of an easy place to get just some, some good like book marketing tips and reminders. Um, also, if you, you can go to bookrockstar.com and that's with some of more of my kind of consulting services, digital products, um, you can find them there as well. So um, those would be kind of two great places to go if you um, are an author who's you know really looking for some some extra book marketing help or expertise. Awesome. And um, I actually purchased Aaron's uh, five dollar PDF. It is probably the best five dollars I've spent in the last three months. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and link up where you can go get that in the show notes as well. Definitely check it out. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome, Aaron. Well, thanks again for for jumping on, and I'll see you next time. All right. Thank you. Damn, what an awesome episode. 
If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing on your podcast platform of choice so you get notified every single time a new episode releases. And if you're struggling with your book sales, head over to smartauthormedia.com forward slash audit to get a free audit of your book sales to see where we can help you bridge the gap between not many sales to a lot of sales. <laughs> it's a free resource call that we have together where I give you some clear action steps that you can take to take your stuff from broken to selling. I'll see you over there. Thanks again for listening.